and we're back for another episode. In this episode, we're going to carry on upgrading the relic. And as always, hello from Ifri. So the reason I'm motivated to do this even after Stormblood is launched is because um, it will give us an advantage towards the Stormblood relic. So trading in the highest quality relic for level 60 will let us pass the first phase of the relic at level 70. So that's why I want to get this done. So anyway, I am now here with Ulan at 6-4 um, in Idleshire. So let's talk to her. So by reconditioning the anima, you can redistribute the attribute points allocated to your weapon. You may only recondition the anima of the weapon equipped when speaking with Ulan. The process can be answered at any time. Uh, no. So, Adishar tells me you wish to alter the status of the anima, is that right? No. Assuming that we do not attempt to push beyond its current limitations, this should be a trivial matter. Mind you, this process requires crystal sand. If you have more, I will gladly furnish you with um, more per our original arrangement. But you need not worry about Umbrite. For this, we require elemental aspected sand to ever be so slightly alter the anima's ethereal composition. Unless you have any other questions, let us begin. So basically, this is just to allow us to like change the stats. I just did them all balanced and so on. Yes. Rather well, wouldn't you not agree? If you should need any of my service again, you know where to ask. Fair enough. Okay, so now um, I probably need to go back to Helix and uh, start the next quest from there. So obviously you do have the ability to change the stats that you put onto the gear already, which I just showed you. So yeah. Okay, so let's do this. So where should be around here? Aha. Let's talk to him. Future proof. So please note, upon completing the quest future proof, you'll receive an animal weapon for a warrior. Okay. That's right. So future proof, and this will aim us towards our 260. Um, relic, the sharpened version. So Aidesha is con see, contemplating the present state of the anima. Changing classes of the job will prevent progress during this quest. Fair enough. So now that the anima can maintain a form seen even by those without your abilities, it is fair to say my research is all but complete. Our last task being to refine any abilities it has gained thus far. Once this that is finished, I shall return to Rad's at hand and make ready to present my findings. I dare say our work here shall forever change the study of arcane summoning as we know it. The hells are you on about, boy? Now, I understand being excited, what with us finally seeing the anima and all, but I think you're losing sight of what our work is all about. Preposterous. The goal of my work was to create a sentient being capable of independent thought, which could then serve to help others. That right? And you really think that you've accomplished that? Bollocks. Ain't no way something what's grown that much that fast can be any kind of stable condition. We've poked and prodded the damn thing more times than I'd care to count, and by the grace of Ralga, we've somehow managed not to mess things up. But tell me this, what happens when we're not around, when a new weapon needs smithing, hmm? I'll tell you what, it'll grow too big for its ethereal britches and keel over. What the anima needs now is a body, what will handle it no matter how strong it gets. Until we can figure that out, your work amounts to naught but piss in a kettle, if you ask me. Oh, but what do I know? I'm just a know-nothing sot with a hammer. Uh, no doubt a refined scholarly lad such as yourself has already considered such complications. Huh. The only thing more insufferable than a drunk card is when he is right. I was so blinded by its radiance I did not stop to consider the future, putting my own desires before the needs of the anima. 
Right, well, there'll be plenty of time for moping after we've finished. And I'm free from that witch, Rowena. For now, we need to think up a way to give the anima a new permanent home. So, the weapon holding it now should be fine for the time being. Just keep an eye on the anima while we figure out the rest. Actually, I may already have a solution. I'll buy an interim one, thanks in part to Ulan and her studies. We were working on a potion of sorts to fortify the animal weapon, that it might be able to further grow. The difficulty proved in our need for ceruleum. It would need to be distilled to serve our purposes, and we simply had not the means to do so. As fortune would have it though, we caught word of a renowned distiller, recently come to Idleshire, and immediately saw him out. After making our case, he was all too happy to assist. Uh, Blaprest is his name. Would you pay him a visit and see how things are coming along? Okie dokie. There are other preparations to be made, of course, but Geralt and I will see to them. Everything should be in order upon your return. So, Blam Press, eh? That gives me an idea. Interesting, interesting. Okay, so now let's head to Idleshire. Let's go. Thankfully, right next to the Aetherite. Right. So where do we go? What do we do? And it's raining. Yay. So welcome friend. What can I do for you? An order of for whom? Oh yes, that scholarly fellow. Ardishir was it? Work on his order is well underway. Working with ceruleum is no easy task, though. Distilling a substance so volatile demands a substantial concentration of aether, the only sort of potent enough being singing clusters. Quite the rarity, you know. And for an order like this, would it require? It would require 50 at least. Procuring such oddities is beyond my abilities, but I have enlisted the aid of two fine young mages to see the job done, if only the price of their services was not so steep. Okay, that's not weird. So there you are, we've brought what you asked for. I trust you're prepared to hold up your end of the deal. My, what fortuitous timing. This young lady here was just telling me how she would love nothing more than to offer you her services in my stead. Uh, yeah, that's what I said. Uh -huh. These are the two lovely ladies I was telling you about, remember? The ones collecting the singing clusters you require. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. My name is Amphacil, and this is my sister, Angelette. I will keep matters brief. Blamprest agreed to undertake certain tasks in exchange for our help. If you would serve in his place, we will compensate you with clusters you seek. Agreed? Okie dokie. Splendid. Now that that's settled, I'll leave you to it. When you have what we need, come back and I w shall see about distilling the that elixir. Ah, that reminds me. A merchant in Rowena's employ deals in singing clusters. I believe it was his mena. Their names all sound alike. At any rate, if you find their task to be too much trouble, you can always try striking a deal with her. Singing clusters obtainable. Yay! So, a repeatable quest is now available from both um, Amphilis, sorry, Amphilis and Angelette. By completing these, either of these repeatable quests, you'll obtain singing clusters which can be offered to Blampress. Singing clusters may also be purchased from Hismina at Rowena's Center for cultural phenom... Uh, whatever. Cultural per. I clicked it too quickly. Now, I need to give him 50. Now, there's two quests. One quest is, I believe, daily, and one is weekly. So, come from a different cloth. Angelette looks at you expectantly. 
So, have you come to help me? I'll gladly pay you a singing cluster if you do, I, as I promise. If you do, I promise. You will? Huh. Yay. Uh, Blind Press is so mean, isn't he? Forcing his work on others. Uh, but a brave adventurer like you should have no trouble with this task. My work requires the use of a very specific fabric. I weave it myself, but before I can use it, I need someone else to rouse the magic seeping aside. That's where you come in. I want to use the memories of your toughest battles to wake it up. But I can't do it in just any old place, or it won't work. You'll have to take my fabric to where the fight is happening, so the memories are fresh in your mind. Now be careful and try not to, to get it dirty. So the key item cloth of distributing memories can be obtained by clearing a dungeon via duty roulette level 50 to 60 dungeons. Okay, dokily, dokily. Next, seeking inspiration, which will give 18. This is the uh, weekly one I was telling you about, which will give 18 clusters. The alpha set looks ready for business. So you are prepared to work then? Good, very good. Now, if you are an adventurer of any merit or distinction, what I would ask of you is simple. A recounting of your travels, of your most spine-tingling, exhilarating battles. Only then shall you have your reward. But a single tale would scarcely be enough to even whet one's appetite, don't you think? That's why I must insist that you write me free. The free gripping tales of daring do and the singing clusters are yours. I can only hope your skill with pen matches that with a weapon. So the key item in Adventurer's Life can be obtained by clearing the dungeon uh, duty roulette leveling. Fair enough. So obtain volume one, I'm doing leveling. So anyway guys, that's it for now. Uh, when I have the 50 singing clusters, we'll continue this quest and we'll see about getting the 260 relic. So, anyway, that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching, and as always, goodbye from me, and goodbye from Mifri. Bye, guys.